welcome back to the shop today we're talking about spindle or lead screw torque and things like that let's assume we got a motor we have the data for the motor and uh, we want to know if this motor is suitable for what we're thinking about so we need to figure out what the torque requirements on our lead screw or spindle or whatever you're going to drive with that motor is and that's the subject for today so let's go over to a machine see what we can do welcome back today we're trying to figure out what the torque requirements are to turn the spindles horizontal and vertical on the shaper so how are we going to do that with household stuff it's pretty simple we use a spanner and our trusty kitchen scale and then we just push it and we're reading about thousand grams one kilogram on the horizontal and reading about 3500 on the vertical spindle up or downward is almost nothing uh, so how are we going to calculate that to a torque it's pretty simple we know this thing is about 250 millimeters long so that makes a quarter of a meter so if we take our kilogram, divide that by four, that's 250 grams or two and a half newton meters. Let's do that again. Yeah, it's about one kilogram. Because the units are newton meters this is a quarter of the me of a meter so we need four times the force to turn that the force is one kilogram if we extrapolate that to a meter the force would be 250 grams to turn that round 250 grams times a meter is 0.25 kilogram meters which equals the two and a half newton meters at the vertical spindle we need about three and a half kilograms let's make that four because there is a bit of uh, grip in it so that equals to one kilogram meter which is about 10 newton meters so we know we need two and a half newton meters for the horizontal and 10 newton meters for the vertical why I'm measuring that will be revealed in a later video but that's how you measure torque with no torque meter you could do it with a torque wrench but you're gonna fiddle until it clicks and it's just painful if you do it with a, with a kitchen scale or a fish scale or whatever you have uh, and do the maths you're you're about the same so now we know the torque we need let's assume that motor has a stall torque of four newton meters so we would be able to drive one spindle but not the other so that means we need a way to increase that torque and the simplest way to do it is with a ratio with a belt drive um, if the ratio <coughs> is 2 to 1 um, you double your torque what you do is lowering your speed but uh, sometimes you don't need that speed what the motor possibly can do so just put a small pulley on that and a bigger pulley on the other side and whatever the ratio is that's your increase in torque so for the 10 newton meter spindle we need at least a ratio of 1 to 2 or 2 to 1 I would rather go higher because the breakaway torque is a bit higher than the constant moving torque of that spindle so 
probably a 3 to 1 ratio and that motor would be suitable. He could drive the other spindle directly. For, for this particular machine it would probably be better to reduce the speed as well because you only want very tiny movements. To get a good resolution um, you probably want to reduce the speed a little bit because these motors, this particular motor, there's 1.8 degrees per step. They do micro stepping, but that can be sometimes a bit critical. Um, so you can conveniently reduce that by factor four or so, which will increase your torque. Um, on a milling machine, it would be different because you, you want some speeds. Otherwise, your maximum travel speed is, is limited. But uh, on, on this sort of machine, it wouldn't matter really. So again, again, the spanner is 250 millimeters, which is a quarter of a meter. We're measuring one kilogram at 250 millimeters, which equals to a quarter of a kilogram at one meter times 9.81 is two and a half newton meters. We're measuring, let's say, four at the bottom, at the vertical spindle, at 250 millimeters, divided by four is one kilogram meter, times 9.81 is about 10 newton meters. It's really as simple as that. Well, now we know the torque to move the thing, but apparently this applies to any machine. If you try to cut something under pressure, you obviously need to consider the tool pressure as well. So if you want to move that table while it's cutting on a milling machine, for example, you need to consider that one as well. Uh, on the shaper it's different because uh, it only moves if there is no pressure because the, the tool is on on the return stroke. So yeah, just in case you do that for a lathe or a milling machine, always consider your tool pressure because that goes on top of it. If you know the pitch of the spindle and your feed rate, you can probably figure it out. On this machine, the it lifts the whole assembly, so it's quite heavy, and also the I think there is it's just a, a bushing, so the gear has a lot of friction. If you lift the table, it goes a lot easier, but uh, that's just the way it is. It's an 80-year-old machine, so that's how it's designed. I think that concludes that subject. Not much more to say. Thanks for watching, and till next time.